Janet here? Janet! Thank you, Janet! And ASG Advanced Systems Group, who's a longtime supporter and member of the VES Bay Area Visual Effects family. Dave Van Hoy, is Dave here? Okay, okay. Garrick Huey, Garrick's here. Jody Capriotti and Amy Zeno. Thank you so much, we are so grateful for your ongoing support for the uh, Visual Effects Society and for our visual effects community. Um, I'd also want to thank the folks that put all this together. Our own event goddess, Rose Degnan. <laughs> who used her event planning superpowers to pull this party off and be able to bring us all together. Thank you, Rose. Woo! Yeah, Rose. And I want to thank the VES Board of Managers, chaired by Alan Bocek, especially Treasurer Mike Conti, and Communication Directors Nina Rappaport-Rowan, um, and a, we have a member of the VES Board of Directors who also helped out David Valentin. Thank you, everybody. And I also want to thank Greg Maloney and for Tim Partridge for keeping this joint going for the last decade. It was no easy task. So thank you, guys. And just quickly, um, you may notice a few cameras here tonight. Imagine and director Joe Johnston are filming footage for season two of Light and Magic. And VES is also filming for our digital archives. So by being here tonight, you're, you are releasing your image to be used for both. <laughs> Just so you know. So in case you're on the lam or in the witness protection program, you might want to leave now. If not, please do not be camera shy. Um, I want to thank John Peters and Jamie Campana for arranging the VES archival filming today. Thank you guys so very much. Sadly, this building is evolving into something new, and it will no longer be the home of Bay Area film history. But the incredible artistry and innovation that took place here will live on in the iconic films that were created here and they will inspire us today and inspire generations into the future. 3210 has created an alumni of dreamers, doers, and world changers and the memories created here live on today in their dreams and their actions. Speaking of memories, we have a really cool setup over in the paint room, um, and we would love to have you stop by and share your memories of the building on camera. This is for the VES archives, and I really hope you'll take the time to, to just say a few words, because we need this history to be preserved. And that's what the digital archives are all about. We have a virtual visual effects museum going up on the VES web website, and we want to help preserve history. That said, I was now my infinite pleasure to introduce Jim Morris, president of Pixar and the founding board chair of the Visual Effects Society, and the man who never looks any older. Thanks, Lisa. Wow. Hello, everyone. It's um, good to see so many and colleagues and friends here tonight as uh, I guess we say our last goodbye to the uh, ILM um, of Kerner, at least. Um, I know this place has had a huge impact on all of us here. Uh, it's also had a huge and transformative impact on the art and craft of filmmaking. It's, it's kind of staggering to think, looking around the stage here, of the tens of thousands of blue screen, green screen, and effects elements that were photographed here. And um, those images live on in hundreds and hundreds of movies, thankfully. See theater behind here? When I got here in 1987, that was still Sprockets, the Sprockets mix stage. Uh, it didn't take long until they moved it up to uh, Skywalker and it became Skywalker Sound. 
but that's where all of the sound work was done originally here. Um, and after that, we inherited it at ILM and had thousands and thousands and thousands of dailies and screenings and company meetings and uh, all manner of thing there. Deeper in the bowels of this building, and some of that's literal, um, <laughs> is where the uh, Lucasfilm computer department originally was, which was later to become Pixar. And Pixar was here for a while as well before they moved and was kind of born here. The stained glass man in Sherlock Holmes, I'm gonna, I think I'm doing a Dennis resume here, but the stained glass man in young Sherlock Holmes, the morph transformation in Willow, uh, the pseudopod character in the abyss, all of these early computer graphics moments were created here when the ILM computer graphics department took over the space that Pixar was in. Um, as time moved on, a staggering amount of the seminal CG work that's in our industry came from this humble space, uh, including the groundbreaking work in Terminator 2 and Jurassic Park. Uh, taken as a whole, um, the astounding amount of uh, effects that were done here, the, the, the starts of sound design work and the mixing that was done and all the CG work that came out of here, really make it kind of one of the seminal places for filmmaking in our, in our age and, and really informed not only cool images in uh, hundreds and hundreds of films and not only cool images in great films, but really um, informed and shaped and changed the art of filmmaking, I think, uh, as it's yeah. practicing. It all started Woo! here. Yeah. This, this building has special meaning to me because my office was right up there through that <laughs> wall for uh, about 15 years of my tenure here. So I spent a lot of time walking through this building, this space, so it's a, a, an emotional time for me. Um, my takeaway from being here today, and I'm sure you all feel the same way, is that the real meaning of this space is where we came to, um, came together to work, came together to have a good time, and make the images that make movies magic. And I think all of us can take that away today. So thanks very much. I think Greg's gonna come up. Greg Newman is coming up now. Where's Greg? I hired Jim Morris. Oh, never mind. extremely honored to be carrying on this traditional practical effects that have been going on at this historical site for so long. Um, after all, you know, how cool is it that you can build something and blow it up? Yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't get any better than that. And then have the footage show in a blockbuster film. Not some D film, or some C film, but an A-list of film. <clears throat> Those are great at dinner parties, so I'm sitting here. My apologies. So this goes over really great at a dinner party. Years ago, I'm sitting next to a doctor. 12 to 16 years of education, saving lives every day. What's he want to talk about? Blowing shit up. <laughs> okay. Very cool industry to be involved in, I have to say. Um, Okay, so we come to 12 years later. Um, we're in a different business climate. Uh, we're championing, we're championing, championing a technology that has been really superseded by computer graphics. And although it's still cool to make things, the business just doesn't seem to be there anymore. Um, so we sat down uh, after a pretty difficult pandemic close down and then a writer's strike um, and we looked at each other and we decided that it was time to close the studio and we realized what that meant. And tragic for some of us, not so tragic for others. Um, Greg Beaumont basically is retired. 
my partner Tim is going to retire. Um, I turn 71 next year, so I'm going to retire. So, and I, and I'd like to just clear one thing up that's really bothered me about the news lately. Um, Fox News reported this as an eviction, and that's not the case. This is a business decision. Um, the Fox guy was here. I talked to him. I told him it was an eviction, and he went ahead and decided that it was an eviction. So, watch out for Fox News. <laughs> anyway, in closing, I don't want to hold this up. In closing, I want to wish you all all the best in your future endeavors. Uh, thank you again for your support of 3210. Take care, be kind, and do your best. Thank you. Uh, Joe Johnson, are you going to speak? Come on up. You won't like it, but I'll speak. It'll be short, I promise. <laughs> Uh, thanks for having me. Um, in 1978, uh, the art department for Empire Strikes Back was over in San Anselmo, and one day this wooden crate arrived, and uh, we opened it up, and it was the, the Boba Fett, the white plastic Boba Fett suit that Ralph and I had been working on uh, designing. And George said, we don't have enough uh, in the budget for 5,000 super troopers, so we're gonna, let's take this guy and turn him into a, a bounty hunter. So I said, well, I went to Jane Bay, and I said, I need a place to paint this thing. And she said, she handed me a set of keys, and she said, George has just leased a building in San Rafael, 3160 Kerner. It's, it's empty, you can have any room you want. So I put this, the suit out on the ground to paint it. Uh, the other day, Friday actually, we shot our last uh, 3210 interview for the uh, for the Light and Magic season two uh, documentary in this very stage right there. So I feel like I'm sort of the bookends for the life of ILM. Um, and what I'm going to say next is going to sound a lot like heresy, and you can you can. You can boo me, or you can wait for uh, Dennis. You can boo him. <laughs> I prefer that, actually. But I have to say that I'm not sad to see this happen. And the reason is very simple. It has been like watching a very dear old friend die a slow, agonizing death. And I think that it's time to, to say goodbye. Uh, the work that was done here by all of you people and, and many who came before you, uh, will live forever on movie screens and TV screens uh, till the end of time. And this is indeed hallowed ground. So I would just like to say, uh, ILM Kerner, it's been a pleasure to know you. Thank you. Creative genius, Dennis Murin. Gee, did I hit you hard? I didn't mean to, it was only a joke. <laughs> uh, boy, let's see, I remember getting in the car in Van Nuys and coming up here with Phil and John and Ken and uh, moving up here and next door was almost an entirely empty building and that was where we're gonna be for the next two years. And time went on, and uh, that show was a success and everything after it, and people seemed to really want us to do the work, and, and we were all eager to do it. And it's been just an incredible time. And uh, to see this is pretty, it's a pretty sad thing. I sort of agree with Joe, that things do have to change, and we all know that. But, uh, and to remember also that the buildings didn't do it, it was everybody here that did the work. And I think we could see, we also could have been in another building. 
and done probably the same work. <laughs> and even in multiple buildings, like men have been the same work. So, but there is something hollow, like he was saying, like Joe was saying here, that is really sort of, I don't know, sacred or whatever. I remember Ted Makey and I, and maybe, I don't know who else, maybe Tom Smith went down to LA. We toured Warner Brothers and looked at the sound stages because we were going to build this and looked at kind of how big they are and the scaffolding to do and what's sort of available, you know, and everything. And the idea of having a big stage right here at this big empty lot next door was pretty exciting. And I just realized, I remember the other day that I christened this building by throwing a champagne glass right up over there, a bottle up there. It was like, whoopee, and now nobody remembers it and I'd forgotten about it. But look at what's done. And look at the people that have been in here, the actors that have been in here right here. Mark and Carrie, so we did the speeder bike. The uh, Temple of Doom, the big lava pit, went all the way up there, right over there. Uh, we all have memories of this place, and they're always going to be here. And it would be really neat, uh, you know, to go to one of the old big movie studios and walk through and see where certain scenes of wonderful movies were filmed. And we can't, because a lot of the studios are gone, and they're just memories, and this will be that. Uh, for a while, unless someone comes in and rebuilds the stage in the future. So, anyway, um, thanks to everybody, and uh, glad that George built this, brought us up here, and uh, the sound guys were here in editorial. They're the ones that really got that whole part of the building. Uh, and we got this part, and of course, had that one over there. And uh, I wanted to mention how neat it was um, some sometime in this when I heard that Bill Murray was in the lobby on the deep building with a couple of people and wanted to take a tour. And I never met him or anything like that, but he got turned away. <laughs> and this is before we did the second Ghostbusters film. And the reason was what we were doing, of course, was confidential, even to him. And it's easy to forget that, but it, is a, it was a competitive business and we all had to keep ourselves, our secrets to ourselves ever since the word or the script got out or whatever it was for Empire and in one of the very early episodes of Galactica had an ice planet in it. And that was a real warning that there's ears everywhere listening and it could happen here for me. The show's the theme through here. So anyway, that's it. Congratulations to everybody for making it this long and the ones that didn't, God bless you all. God bless you all. Maybe down there, God bless you all. Okay, and is going to say some closing remarks. Okay, thanks very much. Excuse me. All right. Uh, first of all, I, I want a huge thanks to Rose Dagnan for putting on this event. And all the other events that she's organized here before, she's a force of nature, and we love you. Uh, 45 years ago, after the success of Star Wars, Island packed up and moved into this building next door. Uh, this building and some of the surrounds, uh, the surrounding group, became the home of an unprecedented collection of artists filmmakers, engineers, and technicians dedicated to advancing the art and science of visual storytelling. Um, right over here, Sprocket Systems, um, where another group of passionate artists and technicians dedicated themselves to excellence in sound. Uh, Pixar was born out of the Lucasfilm Computer Division, right there. These buildings saw incredible innovations. The quad printer, Go Motion, digital optical printer, the edit droid, sound droid, digital compositing for film, morphing, photorealistic rendering of 3D graphics for film, 3D matte paintings, virtual production, iMocap, just a sampling of, of some of the genius work that was done here. Uh, important cultural milestones were laid right here. A small sampling, Empire Strikes Back, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Wrath of Khan, Return of the Jedi, Dragon Slayer, E.T., Poltergeist, Back to the Future, Young Sherlock Holmes, Inner Space, Willow, Roger Rabbit, Star Trek Next Generation, The Abyss, 
Terminator 2, Jurassic Park, Forrest Gump, Twister, Men in Black, Saving Private Ryan, Phantom Menace, Galaxy Quest, AI, Attack of the Clones, Perfect Storm, Pirates of the Caribbean, War of the Worlds, and Revenge of the Sith, and many, many others. Right here was where this stuff happened. And on a personal note, 37 years ago, I walked in that front door and was instantly made to feel welcome, part of an amazing and formidable group of the most talented people around. If I carefully observed how they worked, paid attention to what they were doing, asked the right questions, I thought I might get to a place where I could say that I belonged here. And to everybody who helped build this place and make the incredible art produced here, a deep and sincere thank you for all you did and for welcoming me to be a small part of that. This site... <laughs> this site is the home of an amazing community of passionate filmmakers who made a lasting impact on how films were made, set new standards for excellence in visual storytelling, and at the same time were some of the nicest people I've ever had the privilege of having I have a deep fondness for this site. The work down here was historic, important, and culturally significant. Even if it's not officially recognized as such, the work that you did here makes this place a historic cultural landmark. Just to say, that you've all been so good and so quiet. Um, dinner will be served from 5.45 until 7.45. There is food for everybody, even if you didn't RSVP. Also, be sure you check out the monitor in that corner because it has unbelievable footage, stills, and, and a couple reels from Kerner Optical where we blew everything up and also um, a lot of CG is included. Now, before I release you, I would just like to know, are there any burning desires to speak? Sean wants to, Sean wants to. So we'll give Sean House the stage, and then we'll go eat, drink, and be merry. <laughs>